what I have in front of me to start restoring is this HP 97 calculator, which is actually a scientific model and it has a printer on it. If we go ahead and flip it over, this is a unit that has rechargeable batteries. Move that door. Here's the pack. It's actually included. Um, a little bit uh, scary, but not not bad at all. Nice contacts on and everything. Um, and yeah, so before I start trying to see power it on, see if if it works or anything. We're going to go ahead and open it up and see what the inside looks like before I dare try to apply power to it. We're going to make sure there's nothing severely wrong with it first. I think we're good. Alrighty, we can just right away go ancient construction. Hmm. You know, I was wondering why the case was bulging. It's been repaired several times. The oldest is 77. Wish I could read this person's handwriting a bit better. It looks like it says pick, but I don't think that would be the case. And that, it's either CRA or CR9. I don't think it has a battery in it. Um then 82 something and 84 printer something something was it PIK? Ah, PIK doesn't help but uh, hmm. so this has been repaired several times well let's take it a farther level here So what we're looking at here is the strange springy clips that go through the plated vias on the board to make contact to the other board instead of using the regular 0.1 inch headers. So what I'm working on here is this one pin or spring clip or little whatever they want to call it that has been bent and broken. So I'm trying to get it back in place First using hemostats, then using an exacto blade. And eventually I get the pin bent back into place. And after some checks to make sure everything lines up correctly, I go ahead and push it back into place. With everything seated correctly, I'm sure it actually makes contacts and work quite fine now. I have to do a little bit more touch up with the blade to get the clip just a little bit better. It was slightly off once gone through, so I just messed with it so it could seat all the way in. Just doing some final checks and everything on the visible board to make sure its other interconnects are okay. Okay, so we got the spring clips back in place, so I think this will actually shut correctly. Um, big mistake probably at this point would be not going farther with the undoing um, but now that I have that done that's the only question I really had the front end looks okay even though these diodes are a bit wonk but I guess I won't be putting power that way all through voltage right into the contacts so Wow, if anything, that was just an aesthetic restoration. Look at that. Looks much better now. Wow. Feels like it's not going to fall to pieces as well. So now I'm working on reverse engineering the battery. I'm just going ahead and jokingly taking voltage measurements on it to get kind of what it acts as the polarity. 
and then I'll further check it when I do a physical deconstruction, but this is just so I have some baseline measurements on it. And with that out of the way, I go ahead and mark what currently is the positive and negative connectors. And then I figure out how those connect into the case by actually putting it in there and removing it to make sure I don't get any distortion in my head trying to just mentally flip it. And then I go ahead and do preliminary marks and I'll change it if I notice it is different once I physically deconstruct the battery case. But this is just so as a worst case, there is some form of reference as to which is the positive and the negative. Now I'm deconstructing the battery by carefully prying apart at the different sides. I first try a flathead screwdriver. It proves just as effective as I would expect, and I go ahead and switch to a regular razor blade. And that promptly clicks apart the two halves. And then of course I have to gently cut across the warning label in order to get the other side open. Once in, I'm just looking at the cells and taking note of their orientation and kind of tracing it out in my head to make sure I have an idea. I then mark out on paper its construction design, so if I ever intend to just completely replace the cells in this case, I'll have that written down. And here's an actual look at my terrible drawing, kind of give an idea of how the battery is laid out. So I went ahead and reverse engineered the battery, and it's simply four nickel cadmium batteries in series, and then I figured out positive and negative. And there's all kinds of instructions on how to properly replace the battery packs with modern equivalents, or because you're not supposed to use alkaline because of the cell voltage differences. But if we take a look at this, I'm going to go off of a little theory here. So these nickel cadmium batteries have a very nominal operating voltage of 1.2 volts, whereas your usual alkalines run at 1.5 and drop off fairly quickly. Nickel cadmium is very good about staying consistently at about 1.2 volts during its duration. So if there are four of them in series, that'd be 4.8 volts. Now, with alkaline, if you have three of them in series, that's 4.5 volts. So that would just be low battery situation for these cells. And you would think that uh, these it, the unit would have to run out to at least 1.1 or 1.0 volts on these batteries. So running at 4.5 volts is fairly safe bet. And we'll try on a very, very well regulated, no inductive spikes, no weird switching noise, very well regulated 4.5 and go from there. Wish I could use gentler connectors on... Uh... Oh, be careful. Very carefully turn this over and lay it flat. Mm. All right, so we've got it hooked up to around 4.7 volts or so. Let's go ahead and turn it on. All right, and the flicker is not in real life. It's only on the screen, though at the shutter speed, it seems to be pretty calm. I don't know how to use this calculator. Crazy. No print. Oops. That's a Pretty good. Well, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this works fairly well. Well, I don't know what else to say for this calculator. So I've technically showed that you could, uh, if you were daring enough, replace the batteries with C cells instead. 
but they physically cannot have to fit in there. There's not enough room. They have to be that sub-C cells. There's not really any uh, way you can replace it besides doing that. Or you can go ahead and run it off of a uh, bench supply at uh, under 5 volts. We'll try it at 5 volts maybe at a later date. But at the moment, the calculator is restored and functional.